I eat baby fingers. Mortimer and I stood at the chasm. Beyond the opening was a dark forest where shadows moved around trees. A tiny yellow fluorescent speck made its way towards us. <laughs> a high-pitched female voice laughed completely unperturbed by her surroundings. A stout woman in a fluorescent jacket and khakis walked through the forest. She twirled her fingers and flicked them at her surroundings. The trees bent away from her as far as they could. <laughs> she looked at us. Her square rim spectacles glistened. Mortimer watched her as she strode towards us and stopped a few feet away. Short, black woolly hat with plastic bags tucked in her blue khaki pockets. Good evening, boss. I will follow you. Berta said. She raised her hands, palms up. I touched my heart and gave her a gentle nod. This way. I strode through the tunnel beneath the mountain towards the halfway house. Berta followed me. Mortimer fell in behind her. Doggy does not taste good, Berta said. Mortimer, please be polite to our guest. The black mist parted, allowing us to walk through it unperturbed. Berta twirled her fingers and flicked them at the mist, once to the right and then to the left as she muttered in old East Slavic. The mist responded by firming around us, tranquil. It was as if Berta cast a spell on it. I am blessing this creature, Kate Keeper. You should too, it is part of your home. I strode onto the porch and entered my home, stopping at the lounge. I turned and gestured to Berta. Please come in and sit down, I said. Berta nodded and walked into the lounge. She took her woolly hat off to reveal black cropped hair. She sat down, nudging her spectacles into place. Her hands folded around her woolly hat. Nice home, gatekeeper. Hamish, my ginger cat, sauntered in and took his place on the arm of my chair. Berta watched him. There is no need to be nervous. You will be safe provided you stay seated, I said. Berta nodded. I sat down as Mortimer walked to his usual spot, circling it and then sitting himself. We are all here to listen, Berta. Berta looked at Hamish, her right boot turned inwards touching the left boot. She reached into a jacket pocket and pulled out a square plastic container opening the lid to reveal bits of raw flesh. One of the bits was a baby's finger clumped in with another bit of red flesh that had flecks of skin on it. The tiny ones are delicious, but I can't get them often, so I save them. Enjoying a little bit once or twice a week. Try some. Berta offered me the box. I shook my head. Before, in my country, I could get one a week. I didn't look for them. They came looking for me at my home in the woods. Now it is difficult, very difficult. All have phones, so I must be very careful. But I didn't go hungry, no, no. There are plenty of children that live where I live. They have little tents and nobody notices them. So I go at night, I watch. There is always one or two willing to come with me if I offer them sweets and savory snacks. I take them back to my den. It is very nice, under the flyover, next to the station. My door is a concrete slab that only I can move with a spell. Nobody comes looking. Berta shook her head. She pushed her spectacles up the bridge of her nose. Gatekeeper, they call me foul. You should see how they treat their children. Plenty of them on the street. You should see their eyes when I show them the sweets and savory snacks. They would do anything to eat. Berta tilted her head and looked at me. I got to eat too. I could sense that she was contemplating how I would taste. No. She flicked her fingers at me. No good, I am hungry. Berta looked at Mortimer. <laughs> don't be silly, I don't eat dog. I don't survive this long if I could not go hungry for a long time, gatekeeper. You know, they hunted me back home. They came to my home with fire and pitchforks to stab me to death and burn me on a pyre. They said I was witch, abomination against God. 
Berta leaned closer towards me, using the armrest to support her arm. Tell me something. Who are they to decide who is against God? No, I have lived longer than them. Yes, I have. I have never seen him. I do what I must to survive. He has not paid me a visit. Berta shook her head. He has no problem with me. Berta looked at the fireplace, chin in hand. She tapped her index finger on her cheek. I take my lunch to work and sit in my little mess room and eat these little treats. I store them underground in my den. It is very cold there. I take one out and chop them up for the week's breakfast, lunch and dinner. They call it pre-planned meals on YouTube, yes? Berta smiled. Her teeth discolored, a little darker than when she arrived. Nobody bothered me because I kept a good job. I turn up on time, clean the station and behave. No reason to bother me. I was cleaning the stairs when I saw this podgy boy in a St. Maud school uniform near the end of the platform. He was new, I could tell. He was looking around for the exit. This was his first day at big school. I took him to the side of the platform where there are metal stairs to go down to the track. He went down the stairs. Snap. I cracked his neck. He flopped in my hands. I took him and hid him underneath the platform and cast a spell so nobody could see him but me. I went back to cleaning the stairs. I went and retrieved the sweet boy after station closed at night. The meat was fresh. Mmm. I took him back to my den and got chopping with my cleaver. I follow this carnivore diet, so no pies or garden veg, just meat. I like it raw, like sushi. Mmm. Makes me feel full longer. How do you think I live so long? Berta grinned, her teeth red as if her gums were bleeding over them. You didn't. Something happened and now you are here, I said. I got sloppy, gatekeeper. There was media search for boy, not me. They didn't know it was me because the cameras do not work where those stairs are. I know, I broke it. Nobody saw me. I work on station all the time in this bright yellow jacket. Nobody saw me still. But everybody now look out. Police at station every day. Big problem to eat. Parents walk with children to school so no food. I waited. I tried to catch the kids that live in tents near my home. But they have moved. I watch from my home. I saw this big oaf trying to smoke a cigarette. He was drunk. He had a rucksack on his back and blue woolly hat with long hair. A silly man was hunched over and stumbling, drinking from half a bottle. I don't like filthy men who don't bathe and smell rotten. Their meat is polluted, but he was big enough to feed me for six months. Berta's eyes filled with red goo. Her pale skin's complexion was now rosy. Not just her cheeks, rather her whole face. Mortimer sat up and watched her. He could sense blood too. I went outside. The big oaf was still trying to light a cigarette. Another filthy habit these people love. But let me tell you something. Vape is worse. Oh, going back to story. I lit his cigarette for him as I did. I muttered a spell. He followed me back to my den. I took him inside. He could see that he was in trouble, but he was powerless to do anything but follow my words. Gatekeeper. Spells leave impression on me. Tastes bitter. But this oaf was too big for me to break his neck, so I had to use spell. Berta nodded. Clump of hair fell on her lap. See what he did to me? She took it and tossed it in the fire. Crackle, smoke plumed, wafting out, but it extinguished in seconds. You magic too, gatekeeper. <laughs> Berta laughed. I remained still, eyes on Berta. Hamish hissed at Berta. Keep your pet away from me, Berta said. He's not my pet, and he suggests you behave, I said. He's not a cat either. He does not like me, Berta said. I nodded. Hamish is not fond of those that eat children. Despite his preference, he will give you a fair hearing, just as both Mortimer and I will. Continue, please. Berta nodded. 
I got my cleaver into the big O, cutting straight through his right knee. This man was very strange. He had socks with yellow cricket pads on them. I stripped him bare. He was pudgy with loss of lanky muscle. Not the sweet fragrance of a young one. Berta shook her head. I cut off bits of flesh. The smell was his pain. He watched me slice his skin. He could not move because I commanded it, so he stood beside the wall next to my shelf that I made from children's bones. He cried. Big wet fluffy water drops fell from his eyes as I tore his muscles from his bones. He did not make a peep because I told him not to. Once I finished eating a slice, I pulled his teeth out with my pliers. Hmm, they are there for my broth. It is very good in winter, gatekeeper. I take some to work, delicious. Berta licked her lips, red-colored sweat excreted from her pores, her mouth bloody. Drops fell out of her nose. She wiped it with the back of her sleeve, making a fluorescent yellow jacket mucky. He tasted Indian. I pulled his stomach out. He had spicy curry still in it. The red one, Vindaloo. This man was a pig. Myself, I can't eat spicy food. It gives me heartburn. Berta shook her head. More hair fell out. She looked at Hamish who watched her. She gingerly gathered the hair and put it in a woolly hat. I put the meat strips in the hole underground. I went back to work, but I had to return home. My body was vomiting. Something wrong. This never happened. I took the meat out of the hole and looked at his stomach again. It looked like the day I cut it out. Oh no, real meat goes off. This man was a rubbish bin filled with all sorts of leftover fast food. I know he was eating it, gatekeeper. You see, I eat his flesh, I eat his memories. He was very sad, eat badly and waste away. Not nice to eat, filled with sorrow, no joy. Do anything to forget, to hide, not to seek or do. This was not life. That was him, and I ate him. For me, he did this, he poisoned with all the artificial food he ate. I cannot eat that. My diet is pure. Only I learned this too late. I did not leave my den. Berta's hands dripped blood on the floor. She looked at them. Get me mop and bucket I clean for you. I'll see to it later, I said. You see why I eat children now? They are less tainted. The best morsels are the school children who live in their homes, filled with joy and wonder. Dreams rather than memories, I said. You understand, Berta said. I nodded. You still cut their lives short when you could have eaten an alternative fuel, I said. No, 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 no. I eat children because they taste best, full of nourishment. I tell you this already. Very well. Come with me and I'll show you where you are going next. Berta looked at me. Hamish jumped onto the floor. He watched her. Mortimer remained seated. Berta stood up. She left a blood patch on the seat. Blood oozed out of her paws, dripping onto the floor around her. I strode out the door, followed by Berta. Hamish fell in behind her. I strode down two flights of stairs. Berta twirled her fingers and muttered in Old East Slavic. She flicked her fingers at me. Hamish clawed her ankle. Berta stopped, looking at her ankle. I turned on the step to face her. Your magic won't work here, and you will go where I see fit. Or you can deal with Hamish. Berta turned to Hamish on the steps behind her. His mouth open, teeth showing. He really doesn't like you, I said. Berta nodded. She hobbled down the steps behind me. At the sub-basement, I turned right, striding to the end of the corridor, where I turned right again and stopped at the second door on the left. Berta caught up. Hamish came and stood beside me. I opened the door to reveal a woodland that looked like a forest in Romania. Children ran around playing. For me? I nodded. Berta had a huge grin on her face. She looked more like an old hag with droplets of blood over her face. Her skin was craggy and she hunched over, pulling her right ankle behind her. Lots of morsels for me, she said. 
She entered the forest and ran towards the children. Hamish and I watched as she beckoned one over. Grab. A hand thrust out and grabbed his throat. She ripped his head off. Only he was made of corn. She ripped his torso open to reveal more corn. Yellow beads poured onto the ground. What is this gatekeeper? Did you think killing all those children would go without comment? I assure you that you can eat him. He will not poison you. No, 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 no. I will kill you, Berta said. I touched my heart and gave a gentle bow. When you are ready, I will be waiting. I closed the door. Hamish and I retreated upstairs. I left him at the entrance floor. Hamish continued to the next staircase, going to the temple above. I returned to the lounge. Mortimer had cleaned the armchair and floor. It was free of Berta's blood. He was fast asleep at his spot. A single malt whiskey was waiting on the table for me. I sat down and reached over to Mortimer, ruffling his head. Thank you, old friend. Mortimer's ears perked up for a second and then flopped back down again. This one tugged at Hamish's heartstrings. He is very protective of children, particularly as he has spent a lot of time with the Divine Mother in the meadow beyond the Grey Mountain. Divine Mother has created a place where she watches over vulnerable children. She lets them be themselves, run, play and sleep all in the safety of her arms. Hamish has grown fond of that place too. Seeing the amount of children that end up there has brought a strong dislike for those that hurt children. If Hamish had caught Berta in her den, he would have torn her to pieces. I must admit, I am a little concerned about his recent behavior. I'll have to watch over my old friend for a while. Farewell for now. See you next Sunday at 11, where I'll introduce you to another guest. Stay safe. Don't die in your sleep. Godspeed.